welcome, 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 guys, to another edition of JJ's Watch Hangout. I am joined, of course, by my man, the unpaid intern, the Squatch Box in the house. Welcome, welcome. And, of course, we have a most esteemed guest today for a live interview, uh, the CEO of Carl Suki and son, Robert Punkenhofer. Welcome to the show, guys. I am going to let Ali take it away here, and then we'll get into the chats and all that stuff. Do your introduction, buddy. Um, again, you know, we, we are joined by the CEO of uh, Carl Suhi und Sun, uh, Zone, um, and Jonathan Higgins will come correct me Hi. if I pronounce that dramatically wrong. Uh, <laughs> as some of you who have been watching know, um, I actually have purchased a watch from them recently, and we'll be getting into this and their lineup uh, a little bit more. I applaud very much. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, wearing this whole thing here. Yeah. Ah, the white, the white strap. What, uh, what do you got on yours today, Robert? Well, I of course uh, have the new uh, Belvedere, which we just uh, uh, mm, four weeks beautiful. ago in Geneva at Watches and Wonder uh, we launched. Very but, nice, uh, very nice. That's what I have on the wrist, but in my pocket, oh, I have my pocket watch. <laughs> there you go, beautiful, very nice. From the 19th century, still working. Nice. Yeah, so so. You know, uh, briefly, you know, you guys, you guys, um, actually, before we do that, I want to make sure we cover everybody in the chat and we do have a special shout out. I don't know, uh, JJ, if you want to go through. Uh, yeah, we could do a quick run through and uh, see what's what. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, first and foremost, we want to wish our dear friend REG a happy birthday. Uh, I don't know if you want to say which one it is, but it's a, it's a big milestone for our friend REG. So, of course, we want to wish you a happy birthday, buddy. Hope you are having a great day. Uh, we'll run through the chat. Uh, we got Raj G, member of the crew. What's up, Raj? He says, upvote. We got Duco in the house, reminding everyone to upvote. Uh, let's see. Of course, we have Robert in the house. He says, hi, JJ. This is Robert. I look forward to the show. Thank you very much. Glad to have you. We got the Reaper in the house. We got our man Peruka saying good evening. We got Shane S. joining us. Welcome, welcome. We got our friend Jiggity. We got another member of the crew watches 63. Uh, he says, looking forward to this. Uh, let's see who else. We got Big Sal in the house saying hello to everyone. And we have Hannah joining us. I think that's uh, Hannah, uh, your brand ambassador, correct? Is that Hannah? Hey, uh, that no, she, uh, she's uh, at uh, Team Suhi. Ah, nice, nice. She says, looking forward to this talk. Really want to know more about this Austrian brand. <laughs> there we go. We have Jimmy joining us. We have Mr. Sky Dweller. Welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We have um, the Chili Badger in the house. We have our friend Tanzil Patel Philippe joining us. Thank you, Tan. Welcome, welcome. We got Anthony P in the house. And Shane has become a new member. Welcome, Shane. Thank you for becoming a member. Um, I did paste a member chat from the Magpie. Uh, who has been a member with us. And he says, great panel, and I'm sure to be an interesting guest. Yes, indeed, I agree. It will be good. So I think we are all caught up. Everyone's wishing Ari a happy birthday. And we are ready to go. There we go. All right. All right. I appreciate that. Um, again, we are joined by the CEO of Carl Suhi und Sonne, uh, Robert Punkenhofer. And I'm going to dive right into it because... Um, you know, the genesis of this, and I think this is the most important thing for me, for my own introduction of Robert, is that this, from my experience, was very much a buying the seller experience, right? We say that a lot on our channels, because you don't know, especially the gray market, which a lot of us have to get our Rolexes and Vacherons and Patek's from, um, uh, what's going to come of it. And I had the opportunity to meet uh, Hannah Doppel, their brand ambassador, and Robert um, some weeks back, and it was it was exhilarating, right? You don't get a chance to talk to, to people behind the brains often, and you really, really don't get a chance to hear their passion, uh, uh, you know, in a unstructured way. When you see it in, in interviews or you see it in on, uh, on the trade floor, there's a sales aspect to it all the time, right? So I caught Robert right before he was going off to a football game, right? So he, mm -hmm. he, he likes to keep himself uh, active. And he was running around his office, showing me everything, telling me everything that they were doing. And it was really infectious. It really, really uh, solidified the, the choice to make the purchase. So with that, um, you know, Robert, the, the first thing in terms of brand history, you have brought the brand back to life in 2016, right? Right. And I'd like to, I'd like to hear a little bit about how that came to be. You know, how did you make this decision to get into this market um, 
in in yeah. Vienna, right? Of all of of all places as well. Yeah. Well, uh, I think um, I'm a little bit crazy. In uh, <laughs> I think, and what uh, brought me to the project was not so much. Um, my background in the watch industry, I had no uh, watch industry background at all. But uh, what my background was at that time was uh, diplomacy. So really representing Austria in different uh, markets, like uh, I was based in New York and uh, I love the US, um, uh, Mexico, uh, Berlin, uh, etc. So I was uh, sort of not nostalgic about Austria on the one hand. And on the other hand, my second um, base is uh, art. Uh, I was uh, graduating from New York University Arts Management Program. I was uh, interning at the Guggenheim Museum as a young man. And what always uh, drives me is to create something beautiful out of nothing. And that's by organizing exhibitions, big ones, small ones, festivals, uh, Vienna Art Week. Still, I'm running uh, that uh, big festival. And once I was invited to host a show, curate a show on Austrian design at the Triennale Museum in Milano, this famous design museum, and by researching historic Austrian brands, I discovered Suchi and uh, I was flabbergasted uh, that such a beautiful story, 1822, the way to the Habsburg court. Um, Sigmund Freud, for example, had uh, one of these pocket watches uh, uh, while he was uh, giving therapies. And I said, uh, completely forgotten, this cannot be true. And I was perhaps bored at that time as a diplomat, uh, one summer in a hot August in Barcelona. And um, I said, hmm, I do my own uh, watch now. The only watch I had before was uh, the Max Bill uh, from Junghans. So uh, there was no other watch that I really loved on, uh, in the market. And I said, okay, um, I, I start this uh, watch project. And from, you know, one step gets to the other, uh, hiring a young designer, finding a watch master, one of the best in the world, who uh, was excited to not work for another Swiss brand, but an Austrian brand. So, uh, and suddenly I had the first uh, 25 pieces of, of the Waltz. Uh, this was the first uh, collection I did. Uh, and with the Waltz basically being able to sell this 21st pieces to family, friends, and fools. Um, I said, well, uh, perhaps I can start a company. I wrote to two guys. One, I'm sure you know, uh, Jean-Claude Piva. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he, he never answered the mail uh, back then. Uh, since then, I met him a couple of times, and, and he really loves our brand. But he said, hey, Robert, I cannot uh, work with you because uh, I always was with Swiss brands. I cannot suddenly <laughs> turn to, to an Austrian brand, and now he just started his own brand. But the other guy uh, I asked was uh, Peter Bravik, uh, who was uh, um, a, a former CEO of Nestle, this uh, big company, uh, Austrian, but based in Switzerland. And uh, he fell in love with the project and we founded the company uh, this uh, six years ago now. So last year we've celebrated five years uh, since the restart and 200 years since the first uh, start of the, of the company. And you mentioned um, the, our little office here in showroom. Uh, in the background, you see like uh, some historic pieces. Like, for example, like I can perhaps uh, walk quickly there. Let's see. Here you see wow. uh, two, one is a, um, an alarm clock um, from around 1900. And, and the other one in the background is a wedding clock that is made around 1860 and still running. Huh? It's still running <laughs> uh, eight days uh, power reserve. And um, so basically, yeah, uh, I don't know. It was like a, um, a, a thing of pure passion and uh, not about, it was about meaning and not so much about uh, money. And um, it's, it's nice, nice that you said that um, when, we, when we talked, uh, I mean, you can, still be, <laughs> you can still here talk with the owner of the company. So uh, for sure, we are uh, miles away from uh, being an anonymous uh, big brand. But, uh, but yeah, uh, so that was the start. And since then, it was like a, a, an exciting journey. And um, of course, I had imagined the journey would be much easier because uh, you know, coming from the arts, uh, you take risks. Uh, I said, hmm, uh, the watch industry seems to be very conservative. You know, 
Some brands uh, claim that you can drive very fast. Others claim you can dive very deep. Others uh, say, well, you can fly very high or you don't even own the watch. You just keep it for the next generation. And I said, okay, uh, there might be room uh, for another brand with this kind of uh, Viennese elegance and uh, the Viennese uh, way of life, the Viennese um, design language that uh, I think uh, comes nicely through. Um, anyway, I'm talking too much. I should. Uh, no, 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 no. It's, yeah, it's, it's fabulous, actually. actually. <laughs> yeah. I did want to ask you, you, you mentioned your team's small, and I've met two of your team. You you hired Mark Jenny, right? Your watchmaker. Right. Um, and he came, he previously was with Tiffany, and he had his yeah. own uh, firm, yeah. Noble Time. He did masterpieces for Tiffany. And uh, also with, uh, with his, uh, yeah, with his partner. And then um, he created his own brand, uh, Yeni, for a while, pushing the, uh, that. But uh, then in the US, there was another Jenny watch. So he had to cancel his own name from his own project. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then uh, since then, he's uh, working for some select uh, brands uh, in the background or in the foreground uh, like we we always uh, give credits to the to the people that are helping us and uh, mark without mark i could not have done it you know with no uh, previous experience in the watch industry and uh, he was really crucial and uh, he's he's like a very small operation too so there's the right fit uh, and there's a direct response uh, the whole also, a post-sales service uh, runs uh, through him. So it's a very a appreciative um, and long-standing now relationship. And of course, you know, with all the three collections now, you always need the watchmaster. In the case of the wrist um, watches, it's uh, Mark. In the case, for example, of uh, <laughs> the, the movement of our table clock, this is just a movement. No, uh, it's, uh, crazy. it's it's created here in Vienna, and um, you see it on the website. Uh, this is without the case, of course, but it's very important that you see the case also, because uh, this is uh, we are working with uh, Therese Wiedmer, which is very nice, a young uh, female uh, watchmaster, graduated from this watchmaster school, uh, Karlstein, um, two hours outside uh, Vienna which was founded, for example, by our emperor, Franz Joseph. So there's all, there are all these links. And Therese, the last generation from uh, the Suchi family that was still purveyor to the Habsburg court, Therese was also a Therese. So there are a couple of um, really nice uh, connections that I love about uh, the brand. And uh, the brand story is really authentic. There's nothing like uh, invented there. Uh, we did like... In the first uh, one year, it was more about the research, you know, going to the Habsburg archives uh, in Vienna, in Prague, uh, looking to La chaux uh, Here on the label of this historic box, you see it uh, with uh, Wien, Vienna, Prague, and La chaux So there was a pocket, we had a pocket uh, watch factory in La chaux It was also funny because I went there to research uh, the address and um, it turned out there's no like historic workshop there, but uh, social housing. And um, so the first uh, part was really research uh, the legacy. I think uh, for a luxury brand, one big, big factor is uh, a unique legacy. And basically in our case, and the legacy is the only thing that you cannot copy really. You know, uh, it's, it's only us that has this legacy. And the other thing uh, was uh, for sure this kind of... Uh, uh, and that was that's driving me to bring some uh, creativity, innovation uh, uh, to the field. Uh, not that we are uh, reinventing the watch industry, but some little details, like for example, on the on the Waltz number one, uh, the second disc. No, because I said, okay, uh, Vienna is not a speed capital like uh, New York or, or London. So the second dial on the six indicates, okay, the watch is running, but not every second counts. So it's yeah. like a, play, uh, a playful take, a, a suchi twist uh, on the Viennese Waltz also, you know, this circling. Uh, and yeah. also on the now on the Belvedere, if you look at these two watches, uh, the, the date window is, uh, is different every day. 
So it's the jumping date window that's uh, moving along every 24, hour, 24 hours. Yeah. So and in a few minutes, we're going to pull up some of uh, mm -hmm. some of the, the better pictures. But the, the I got the day night, right? And I got yes. a custom day night made. It's so yeah. uh, that the second style, right, you can, it, you know, moves very slowly around. And I can see it nicely on, on the screen now, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's really actually, it's whimsical and it's, it's really nice. The finishing... So I had my day night made with a stainless steel case and the finishing, and we're going to see some, some close up pictures of it, is really, really good. Right. Even the, right. The crown has um, the slots, the knurling, or it's not really, you know, cut in the same pattern as the, the dial itself. And then has the cabochet on the, on the side. It's really like, you didn't cut any corners for the first take of, of this type of watch. I was, I was really impressed with the finishing and, and the design elements. Um, it's it's really really nice. So I love the quirkiness, by the way, of the the small seconds. Even on like the the number one that you showed, just to give the dial some type of life. You know what I mean? You could yeah. see it moving, but the seconds aren't really in your face. I think you really nailed it by, because a lot of times you know uh, people will say like it's a dead dial, right? With no seconds hand, it's just yeah, it has no yeah. life. Right, yeah. But, but I like the way that you incorporated that design into it, um, where it's still you see it's moving, it's functioning. And it gives it that little bit of life, but it's not that, like you said, in your face that every second counts. And uh, that, that, I think that's a really nice touch. I also think it's pretty cool that the date moves around on the Belvedere. I know you're getting some love for the Belvedere in the chat. Uh, people like that. And they're really impressed with your table clocks. Um, you know, uh, you're, uh, I think a lot of people are enjoying what you're doing. I, I think the aesthetic is refreshing. It's nice to see something, you know, with a little bit of, I don't want to say really quirky, but more personalized, like to you, like, you know, you don't really see anyone else doing that. And um, I do enjoy that very. Yeah. Very and I actually, you know, the people who've watched your show for a while know that I struggled dress watches. So I've owned a number of trust watches over the past few years. None of them have lasted on my wrist more than an afternoon. Really? Right. The I'm not a dress watch person. So I was looking for, you know, I have my Royal Oaks and those are sports watches that they can you can dress up, right? Mm -hmm. But I wanted a dress watch that was slightly sporty. And the curvatures, the indices, the fact the black and white, you know, the the wandering seconds, it makes it a slightly sporty dress watch for me. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, like the, that that feeling. Yeah. The perhaps I can um, talk a little bit about this the, the design approach, no? Because um, what I wanted to do is an elegant uh, dress watch in the first uh, place. And when I talk about the Viennese elegance, uh, if some of you guys have been to Vienna, you, you feel it when you walk through the historic center uh, but in particular. But also what is, uh, was important with the briefing and also the, the work with uh, our very young designer uh, who just had not even graduated from, from the school, uh, from the university, was that uh, there was one guy because uh, Suchi basically stopped uh, at this wedding block, you know, in the Biedermeier, it's called, at a certain design stage. Um, and I said, okay, uh, we have to bring on the fire and not the ashes. So where did Suchi stop and where do we continue with the design language? And this, this is definitely Vienna 1900. It's called the Viennese uh, workshop, uh, uh, Art Nouveau, uh, the, the Vien Vienna style. And uh, that meant that, for example, there are this kind of, you meant the, uh, the curvature, uh, etc. All the materials connect seamlessly. So, for example, the leather into the steel, um, the dial into the case. Um, so many small details. Or, for example, on the on the uh, on the uh, on the wristband, on the back, you have this kind of ornamentation. This is directly taken again from a historic building here in uh, Vienna, the famous uh, American bar, actually. I want to see the, uh, uh, oh, you said in the back there you have the... Uh, the, yeah. the movement of the waltz or the Belvedere, do you want me to pull up? No, here, do you see the... the back of the strap, he's showing yeah, the... Oh, back of the strap, yeah. sorry, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, so many details that are directly taken from this kind of design language and ornamentation that is uh, very common uh, here in Vienna. And Adolf Loos, this famous architect around 1900, he was very instrumental in influencing uh, many other architects uh, later in life, the, the modernist movement, basically. And, is, uh, yeah. is the design pattern on the back of the straps intentional as far as purely aesthetic, or is it also um, to give like some aeration to the wrist like because it has some grooving in it? No, uh, well, uh, the ornamentation on the Belvedere is different from the ornamentation on the Waltz. The, 
when you look at the ornamentation on the Belvedere, it's the, basically a Baroque drawing of the Baroque garden of this famous Belvedere Palace, which the rotor has... It's the Belvedere Palace, yeah. Yeah, right. the micro, uh, micro engraved palace. So it's a view from above uh, onto the beautiful Baroque gardens, which now you can have a walk. Today was a, such a beautiful day. It's, uh, it's an amazing work of art. And uh, yeah, we simply said uh, we wanted from the outside, again, from the front, it's a pretty elegant body, but on the inside, it's getting really baroque, no? In with this golden uh, rotor, with the with the holding ring, uh, which uh, we decided to really, uh, yeah, uh, pimp up uh, in a way that uh, others I haven't seen that before. And it's how often do we ever talk about the design of the inside of a strap? Right, never. right. almost never, right? Right, we do never. Have a- we do have a super chat who's come in from Voulez-Vu. Our friend Voulez-Vu with the $5 super chat wants to know, is this watch available in the United States? And thank you for the good content, JJ. You are welcome, Voulez-Vu. I will let Robert take that question. Is this watch available? Yeah, it's, uh, it's available. Uh, we have not yet a uh, retailer uh, in the U.S., but we um, r- regularly ship to the uh, U.S. directly and uh, no problem at all. So... We do direct shipment uh, to our U.S. collectors. And uh, we have some requests right now since uh, uh, since uh, Geneva. And um, we are perhaps uh, soon uh, with uh, retailers. Yeah, that, that'd be fantastic. But, yeah. but we can the, um... Right, but they can contact you directly. I know I think this speaks back to what Ali was saying before about you know, the customer experience how, and I know he was very, very happy with, um, you know, the whole experience being able to change certain things and, you know, get exactly what he wants. This picture impressed me so much when I saw the, the, the detailing in the movement and the back of the case, I was quite impressed. So yeah, Jimmy in the chat had asked, yeah. so I wanted to pull right, that. Right. That's my watch specifically. It was an overcast day. It wasn't even a sunny day. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it's beautifully done. It's beautifully done. Uh, it's it's a Valju 5401 uh, base movement. Um, so I said, somebody else asked about that. You know, they didn't skimp, right? This wasn't like, they didn't try to bring a couple of art, artistry elements and use a Salida. But this is, uh, yeah, with um, uh, Vosche we are working, that uh, also working for Oh, yeah, Va- Vosche, I said Valju. It's a Vosche, uh, yeah. Uh, Vosche, uh, Fleurier. Uh, and that's uh, really the highest end of uh, movement yeah, making. Yeah, they make movements for Parmigiani. They make movements for Hermes. Richard um, Mille. Uh, Richard yeah. Mille uh, Very form. handsomely decorated as well. I, yeah. I, I do. Uh, I, I like the design aesthetic. It's not overkill. Like, we're, you know what I mean? It's just the right amount. I, I, I do enjoy it. Very yeah. nice. And we just adapted a little bit so that the second disc uh, is uh, stable uh, uh, and, and holding. Yeah, yeah uh, that's, it doesn't wobble at all. It's like... It's perfect. I was expecting maybe a little bit of movement or anything, but nothing. It's yeah. perfectly in there. Yeah. So yeah, Jimmy, that's this is a picture directly of mine. Um, it's a nice the, picture. Thank you. Yeah. yeah so and actually, uh, this uh, again, you know what a uh, what us as a smaller company allows us. Uh, this was basically the project uh, with uh, Laurent Picciotto from Corner Passion in Paris, our trusted retailer in Paris, and uh, he saw a mock-up that Hannah did on our Instagram, like a voting, uh, who likes the white version of the waltz better than the black one. And she did a mock-up of uh, both uh, halves uh, together. And then um, Laurent uh, wrote me a WhatsApp, hey, Robert, why don't we do this kind of uh, a version of the, uh, <laughs> of the watch? And uh, within three months, uh, we shipped um, uh, this uh, edition, um, the first pieces, yeah. It's... Uh, mm-hmm. It's uh... yeah, I I I love it. I I love it. Um, now we we do have uh, a super chat question from Patel Philippe, and it's funny because I was just going to ask something similar to this, but phrase it differently because we were talking about these beautiful dress pieces, and I was going to actually kind of segue into what made you start to veer off into something like the Belvedere. But uh, I'll read uh, Patel Philippe's question, and we'll go from there. So he says, Robert, on YouTube, everybody perpetuates that the dress watches are dead. But your brand has extensive dress line. What are you seeing in the industry? Is demand for dress watches still good? Yeah, I mean, uh, to be honest, um, I don't do, like, market research and what sells. You know, for example, when uh, we did uh, the table clock, 
uh, my partner told me, hey, Robert, you're uh, crazy again. Uh, if, you, if you sell one piece, uh, I congratulate you. And now we mm. are doing already a second series and uh, shipped uh, at least three, piece, uh, three pieces of the table clock to Swiss collectors from Austria. Uh, and again, you know, uh, when I did the Wilds, the classic uh, yeah, uh, wristwatch, I didn't think about, I, I thought about, okay, what uh, do I want to do? You know, uh, yeah, here you have the photo uh, of, uh, and again, you know, the idea was to do a modern uh, table clock and not like just do a movement and they put a case on top. But this was mm -hmm. like an intensive conversation between the designer, an Austrian designer and the Austrian watchmaster here uh, with me in between uh, to have this kind of amazing design where the, the movement becomes like the, the theater or the opera within this proscenium of this uh, amazing case, which is cut out of a brass, uh, solid brass uh, block. So high tech, and then the rest is all handcrafted, including the glass, uh, hand polished, hand curved, etc. But coming back to the uh, uh, wristwatch, uh, for sure, uh, as I feel after the Geneva show, um, hmm. the, uh, for sure, this kind of uh, more sporty versions, the daily uh, wear, the more casual ones, uh, for sure, it's a, a bigger market than the very classic uh, uh, dress watches. But then again, um, in our case, it's pretty much an equilibrium uh, because uh, I think what we tried with our dress watch is, uh, again, the, from the design point of view, if depending what you wear, if you wear it with a T-shirt, it looks uh, quite uh, contemporary, mm. quite uh, f really fresh. It's not like conservative, uh, dusty, right, uh, right. boring. Uh, yeah, it thing. has a modern edge to it, right? Not not so I, traditional. Um, it does, definitely has a modern take with exactly. the with the good characteristics of traditional, like traditional quality, but with a modern, fresh take. I'm of the uh, opinion that this this year and going forward, the trend. And I know I talked to a few guys that you know are in sales, kind of agree that dress watches or dressier watches are kind of making a comeback like you said wear it with a t-shirt and a pair of jeans and it, it works it still works or a polo shirt you know so i, I agree with you um yeah. but I man there's different days but uh, for us i think uh, what was important to achieve within these first uh, five years and with uh, like a very little investment uh, and lots of laugh and and and, uh, and the enthusiasm is uh, to build this collection you know, uh, and not just have one watch. Uh, because also talking about, uh, like talking to, to retailers, uh, when I've started out the, the first year, you know, uh, people said, ah, you have just uh, one watch and uh, who knows uh, if you are alive next year <laughs> still, right, yeah. etc. And now we have like these uh, three beautiful collections that people recognize as a clear design uh, language and, and DNA uh can be can be noticed and um so for us to have also a, a more casual watch uh is super important and the reaction so far is uh is tremendous we for i can i would say we yeah we've been we see a momentum that we had not uh seen but also you know starting uh, this company of everything builds also up you know now i'm talking to you right. and i really feel honored that you invited us um, so everything uh, builds up, uh, but uh, in general, I'm I'm uh, on the side of uh, Mr. Stern uh, from Patek that uh, we don't want to just uh, sell one type of watch, you know. But uh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, first I just want to say it's it's our pleasure to have you. I mean, yeah, you're, you're an incredible interview. Obviously, super knowledgeable and an interesting person. Um, just to hear how you started it, uh, your company, and really went for it you know, is very inspiring. And the fact that you're not making watches just for based on sales that you're making, which truly inspires you. I think that's very important. And, um, uh, you know, you, you have to, I I'm a firm believer in you have to set the trends, not give people what they want. You have to show them what they want. Um, you, and by the way, the table clocks are incredible. I'm totally blown away by them. I think that's one of my, uh, you know, one of my favorite things, Mike, I have a, I do have a question though. Like you did say you're building up, right? And we'll get to some of the other questions in the chat as well. But you said like you, you're building up, right? So now I'm curious, does that mean that you're going to start doing um, some complications? Like, because in my brain, I'm totally seeing like you could do like a really modern take on a cool world time or something like that. You know, like 
uh, I don't know if that's in the works or which complication or, do you want? I would love to see uh, just looking at not, not particularly that I would want one so bad, but just looking at the DNA of your brand, I think you would make such a killer modern take on a world time, you know. Yeah, I mean, could you because the date wheel on the Belvedere, right? Uh, you, you, the, I could their totally take on the seconds disc, the date wheel, right? Yeah. I, I could see their take on a GMT being. Mm -hmm. You know, well, uh, yeah. you, should uh, you should join me tomorrow at uh, ten thirty. I have a, a design meeting with our designer talking about uh, masterpieces <laughs> for next year. So <laughs> I, I, I would love to. I, I'm, I'm him, all about that. Right? <laughs> give him uh, your briefing right away tomorrow. But uh, yes, we are we are talking about um, uh, masterpieces. Uh, so on the one hand, with the Belvedere, we try to get a little bit more democratic, also from the price price point of view. And uh, but we are also talking about uh, masterpieces. Uh, hopefully, uh, we can do the, uh, those uh, starting next uh, next year. Um, I'm not yet uh, fully decided. That's where honestly uh, tomorrow at 10:30 I have to uh, I have uh, this meeting. Um, it's because you know to do uh, so something just to, to to have it doesn't make sense. So I urge. Um, Mark, uh, Jenny, and also Milos. Okay, if we do a masterpiece uh, and whatever complication now, um, they propose, for example, a Dubillon um, with uh, with together with a uh, Vosche uh, working on, uh, with a Vosche movement. Uh, that uh, super nice. Um, but then, what is the Suchi take on a Dubillon? No, how can we twist it? Uh, that it uh, makes sense and not ah, another dubio, you know. So spinning it's pretty... spinning turbion in the small seconds area, the same way your your small yeah. seconds. Spin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, we'll see. But uh, we are working on that, and uh, it will be based on uh, the the design and case uh, of uh, the Vals number one. So it will be right. a development uh, uh, based on uh, the Vals. So Beautiful. we'll see. So we have to redesign a little bit uh, the casing. It will get a little bit smaller, uh, most likely. Uh, not much, but perhaps around uh, 39 millimeters. We'll see. I don't know what you think about it. Uh, as long as you still have a watch, it's 41 mil or bigger for my, because my wrist are <laughs> yeah. huge. Yeah, yeah. Right. No, no. I'm, I'm good. For you, we always do extra pieces, you know. Uh, <laughs> 39 always seems to be the sweet spot for most most uh, dress piece people yeah. i like personally 40 41 you know 39 yeah. to 41 anywhere in that range i like yeah my, my designer pushes me to really go super small but i i don't want because then again you are following perhaps a little trend uh but yeah, yeah. well there it's, is a huge a huge amount of people who do really love the small pieces as well so i i, I get that yeah I, I i totally understand i did i did want to go back to a question that's been lingering for a few minutes in my head so you were a diplomat I was. I quit right. two months before Corona hit. I quit my steady job and income. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so, like, you know, and even if though you were an art major and stuff like that, this is a massive life risk to take. No, uh, I don't think so. Um, for for it was well timed, I would say. Uh, I'm, I'm not a rich man, but uh, back then, my son, I was um, a single father uh, since he was eight years old. So I never, I've, I always needed like a, a safe uh, employment in a way. And, um, but then my son, uh, after some very difficult years, uh, he was uh, flying off like a condor. Actually, he's right now traveling uh, in Patagonia. And uh, he, for the last four years, he was earning his own living. And uh, so I was not in, in responsible for anyone else. And I said, hmm. Um, and I also, uh, in parallel, I had this other base that I was boosting at that point with my arts business uh, curate, as a curator. So I had um, already prepared a little bit my takeoff from an employment and uh, take the risk um, of, uh, of starting out as an entrepreneur. Um, but of course it is, uh, in a certain way, you know, back then when I quit after 25 years, Robert, are you crazy? Austrian diplomat, trade mm -hmm. commissioner, you could be trade commissioner. I don't know, in New York, back in New York and elsewhere. Uh, even my lawyer told me, uh, Robert at 55, you know, uh, think about it. Uh, you won't get a job anymore. <laughs> uh, but, uh, the, uh, I did, don't regret it all, regret it at all. But I had already prepared, uh, 
uh, two income streams uh, with uh, a little bit, I hardly take anything out of Suhi. Uh, and on the other hand, a little bit uh, from a curator's fees as a curator for art and design. So that may, that provides me my good life I have. Uh, yeah. Good for you. Good for you. So I actually, I'm going to pull up the, the website. Um, but before I do, since people ask about, you know, they're still looking for a U.S. stockist, right? Um, and, uh, but the order process. So I, I contacted them through um, Instagram because I wanted something custom. I think it was Hannah managed your Instagram, the brand ambassador, or somebody responded very promptly, uh, gave me a detailed invoice, um, gave me the timeline. They actually beat the timeline by like 50%. It wasn't a, a very long lead time. Uh, shipped via FedEx. The long pole in the tent was actually FedEx Customs got confused, but the uh, uh, Carl Suhi did the you know proper declaration, very detailed, so there wasn't anything wrong for Carl Suhi. FedEx couldn't find me for whatever reason. Um, but it was a very smooth process. So the, the you know, if it, people, a couple of people mentioned that they would definitely consider one or somebody said definitely buying one, buying one now before there's a stock is I don't see any, any, you know, particular risk. It was as smooth an international transaction that I've had. Uh, you want to grab that super chat while I pull up the website, JJ? Yeah, absolutely. We have a $5.50 super chat from our friend Patel Philippe. It says, Robert, how would you describe the target market of watches that you are making? Are, are there specific geos or profiles for customers for the waltz? Hmm. Uh, yes, I mean, it's a, it's a very important question that you should ask this question before you start the company and the product uh, process, perhaps. But uh, then again, uh, the experience is uh, definitely is not a watch for a first time uh, watch buyer. No? Usually uh, our clients have already a, really a passion uh, for watches. They usually already have like an Audemars Piguet or they have a, a Rolex uh, indeed. And then look for something special that not everyone has. So for... Um, for people, people in the know uh, that uh, want to have something really special, want to have something really exclusive. I mean, we are talking about a very uh, limited production still. You know, uh, our aim is to uh, slowly, slowly increase uh, our production to 500 pieces uh, a year. And uh, so you have really something exclusive, uh, uh, something yeah, not everyone has. And uh, usually people come uh, from very different backgrounds, really from uh, doctors to finance people to, um, for example, one of the biggest design collector worldwide is, a, is a, a client of ours. So people that appreciate these kind of little details that uh, go into our design thinking. Um, but and, and certainly at the price point we have, uh, yeah, you have to be able to afford it. So... Um, but usually what, uh, when I, when I, as I mentioned before, when I did, um, uh, start the project, I was basically thinking about myself, you know, so, um, um, uh, I had in mind that you, uh, you know, uh, other curators or intellectuals or, you know, designers or architects, uh, would, uh, buy the watch. But uh, not 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 so much. No, it's really people from every walk uh, of life um, that uh, can, yeah that are okay with the price point. You know, somebody asked me a question earlier. I, I didn't answer it then. I think this is a good interlude to answer it. Is that somebody asked how I came across Carl Su uh, Sui? So I was because of people like Young Brando and Swiss and Higgins and Marco. I become more interested in, in movements, right? So I was actually reading about movements in the Hermes H08, right? And there's a voucher movement, not the same movement. And I started going backward from there and looking at other watches that had the the, the Vasha movement and and I saw some amazing pieces. Then, you know, when you're at the, the various movement databases, they tell you like what watches have them. So I came across the 5401. The watch they cited was actually the waltz mm -hmm. right yep. and then i was looking at other when i was like who are these people why is this a you know ten thousand euro watch the prices are extremely competitive right now you yeah. said it's true like when you say this isn't like a first-time watch these are at this price point but they're not expensive for other watches that have the same movement not even close don't so tell me don't, don't tell my my my, my... <laughs> 
this is part about it. Yeah, I mean, uh, for sure. Uh, yeah, the, yes. um, I mean, uh, perhaps um, uh, the a good friend of mine uh, from Vacheron Constantin, uh, Americas, the boss of uh, Americas Vacheron Constantin. Uh, he, I met him uh, in. Uh, he's an Austrian guy, and I met him in uh, Geneva, and he saw the Belvedere, for example, and said, "Come on, uh, wow, what at this price, Robert? At least eight thousand. 500 you should offer it and also the, the with the micro rotor uh i think we should increase uh prices yeah uh, <laughs> so yeah you guys might if you're thinking about placing an order before uh before carl carl suhi und und sonne goes the along is soon uh, along and so no. route of a 30 percent increase right you might really consider it there we will never be there no but um i mean for us for example the the one of the biggest challenges uh as with many other brands is uh, this kind of uh, price increases also for all the parts, you know. I mean, we faced, uh, since I started five years ago, at least a 30% uh, increase, uh, if not more. And uh, that's one point, uh, and really a tricky point to, to keep the, the price uh, and value proposition uh, in place uh, without losing our margins. And uh, the other challenge is really getting uh, this high-end uh, uh, watch parts uh, just to give you uh, one episode from my business life, uh, last fall, I said, okay, we are running out of cases for the vials. So uh, we contacted our um, case producer in Switzerland and uh, they said, okay, uh, in March, we, we can uh, process your order. And then I thought, okay, this was like fall last year. He means March 23 now, basically. No, he meant uh, March 24. You know, so, oh. uh, and then of course, uh, you know, some, some people sometimes believe uh, at some brands that it's like an artificial, um, in our case, uh, not, not really. You sometimes really have to wait. Yeah, that you're artificially holding back uh, stock, right? But it's also, yeah. don't help holding back. <laughs> right, right. I understand. I, I would agree that this is definitely. Um, targeted towards more of an enthusiast not like obviously not like a first time watch buyer wouldn't come across i think this would be targeted uh, you know in general or found by people like ali who are general enthusiasts who are searching for something and come across you know um what what the quality that you guys are offering and the styling and you know the uh, the better price point just happens to be like a like a cherry on top i guess you would say you know mm, but, yeah um, Right. So my, my favorite Belvedere is actually the the day the white. Ah, uh, great. Um, I I really like the the styling of this watch. I did want to I wanted to ask you one design element. The hands I had just assumed, and I've said it actually on air, that the hands pay tribute to the end towers of the Belvedere Castle, but I don't know. Ha, ha. Uh, I'm not I, honestly. I'm not sure. I would have to ask. They do now. <laughs> but, uh, you do now, yeah, exactly. That's the story now. You might um, be right. mm -hmm. but, but I'm not so, sure. So I had the website up for people. You know, I think people are already going to the website. I did link both uh, in the description of the YouTube video is both the website and the IG if people didn't find it. Um, you know, so the Belvedere comes in in three color ways right now: the white, the black, and the Danube, uh, a nice blue. Yeah. Um, Sixty-four hundred euros. Uh, plus the, you know, the import fee for 6,400 would be like 200 us dollars, right. um, right around there. So, and then there's a design meeting JJ has been invited to tomorrow. So <laughs> we'll yeah, see what I'm, comes I'm curious if the Belvedere's uh, cousin is going to come out with the bracelet, you know, some type of bracelet model. Uh, is that something that might be in the work towards the sporty Ooh, side of Yeah. Yeah. Because bracelet uh, like a whole nother step, right? A whole. Uh -huh, okay, no, no uh, not not the uh, design. Ex uh, yeah, brand extension, not yet. I mean, okay. my, my wife talks about the perfume. <laughs> oh, <all right. laughs> but she's like an expert in that uh, field, but uh, not yet. No, we have to focus on the watches to get the watches. Uh, yeah. Right, right. Out. JJ also happens to be somewhat of an expert in the fragrance field. <laughs> oh, really? I, I would say uh, uh, an, 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 a, a strong novice. Uh, I, I was uh, very much into it. Unfortunately, allergies seem to have kind of knocked me out of the uh, fragrance collecting world because, uh, yeah. you know, it, it just seems to have uh, be a little too much for my sinuses lately for the last like year or so. But yeah. I was very much into the, the fragrance world. 
really no, it's, it's interesting because uh, I mean I knew the uh, contemporary art collecting scene uh, quite well mm-hmm. but I was uh, amazed how big the watch collector world is and now I'm discovering the perfume uh, collector world uh, oh, yeah. my wife uh, and this is again uh, such an obsessive field uh, wow I mean yeah it's amazing I think they all kind of attract the same general type of personality who gets really into something that they enjoy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, at one point you turn around and you have a, a wall of a hundred fragrances. You're like, how did I get here? I wanted three like nice fragrances, maybe like a date night, a casual and, uh, you know, <laughs> exactly. But, you know. And then I, I, and I tell my, my wife, please uh, don't, I have one, uh, or two maximum, uh, uh, perfumes because, uh, I'm getting confused, you know, if I'm taking every day a different, and also I'm getting confused with my wife because, uh, you know, uh, if she changes every day the, the perfume. But anyway, that's a different story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, this whole time I've been like uh, just slowly moving between pictures. You have the skeleton dial, which you've, mm. you know, you've you've modified the, not modified, you, well, you've skeletonized the movement. I should yeah, can you show the skeleton? It's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing piece also. So, this is the dial. I'll go back to the dial in a second. Yeah. But what I thought was really nice was that you yeah, guys you the, skeletonized the, 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 the movement. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's just a beast. Yeah, it's really a beast. It's a, yeah. it's amazing. Uh, and they, it, it, again, you know, here the aim was a skeleton. Uh, when I looked at skeletons, usually they are so fussy that you cannot read the time. Uh, so I wanted to keep the, the cleanliness um, and, yeah, the, the soberness uh, of our design language. Uh, but still have this skeleton. Basically, you can look through, uh, and you—it's like hide and seek. You can look through, or you can, or you cannot. It kind of reminds me of you know when people have like those beads, like you walk Light. through the room, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, but in, in a much, much nicer and elegant yeah. way. I can yeah. really see your, how your art background uh, transfers over into the watch world. Even looking at the way, you know, I don't know how much input you did with the skeletonizing. You know, the, uh, the, the way we put the flower is very much again influenced by my time in new york uh, mm-hmm. when i was um, studying at uh, new york university and uh, working at the guggenheim this is a reference to robert Ma- mapplethorpe a uh, famous um, photographer artist who unfortunately died uh, in the in the aids crisis uh, but uh, he had a very again very uh, reduced design language or uh, aesthetics and uh, it pers- uh, it perfectly fits um our style here <laughs> and we have a good question from our friend patel philippe uh five dollars and fifty cents super chat says robert how would you describe and differentiate austrian design from your swiss and german counterparts what would you say makes your design uniquely austrian okay uh, nice question thank you um as a former director of the austrian design foundation i'm pleased to answer uh hopefully <laughs> uh Basically, you know, uh, Austrian design um, is, I would say, it's between the German design and uh, Italian design. Um, We are, the German design is very engineered, you know, very clean, very clear, uh, but uh, a little bit sometimes uh, not really emotional or, yeah. Uh, Whereas uh, Italian also, it's pure emotion sometimes. And uh, Austrian design... If I look at also at the history of companies like Tonet, uh, these famous uh, coffee house chairs uh, that revolutionized uh, the, the furniture industry, the IKEA of the 19th century, basically, it was always uh, yeah uh, clean, in the industrial, um, clear design, but then always with an emotional twist. Uh, so, in that sense, as Vienna is already, it's where the Balkan starts. It is with a little bit of fire and uh, soul, you know, uh, but not as uh, emotional as um, as the Italians, and not as uh, reduced, um, dry, as uh, engineered as the German or the Swiss. Um, and also, for example, when you when you talk about Swiss uh, watches, the second uh, hand is the most important one. If you uh, on the train station, it's the second uh, hand that is the most prominent one with the red dot, for example. No, in our case, we don't even have a second hand, a second hand there. And um, so, also that that's uh, one. That's basically a quick uh, a quick explanation. But I could continue. You no, know, for example, uh, the the love of material that uh, went into, for example, uh, this kind of uh, material we use 
for the case of the table block. It's a solid brass uh, block uh, cut out, a laser cut, but then the, um, the coating is like three different layers of polishing, of uh, treatment, uh, so that we get this kind of uh, silken uh, shine uh, out of the material. So it's a love for the material also. And uh, yeah, I could continue. There are a couple of other uh, traits. Basically, uh, this was uh, my vision to demonstrate at this design exhibition I curated and when I first uh, got hooked uh, with Suchi in Milano. So tell me I'm wrong when I say that you <laughs> buy the seller. Like, this is a perfect yeah. example. You know what it is? It's because, and uh, you know, I'm not saying this to just like compliment you because you're here, but just an honest opinion. Um, you, the way you explain it is you're very educated and articulate and passionate about what you're talking about, but you're not sales pitchy. You know what I mean? You're not like, you know, trying I'm to make it sound pitchy. so great. You're just very <laughs> clearly explaining the process. And it's just, very, it is very interesting. Your story in general is very interesting. Your product, your, your, you want your to say I'm like simply a bad salesman, you know, you could also <laughs> say, <laughs> yeah, the, 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 you know, if I, I just saw this picture, I think for the first time, this one here, the skeleton. If I had seen this, I think my custom order would have been for this. You can still you can still reorder, you know. Yeah, no, there's th this is an option. This is an oh, option. Yeah. I mean, of this uh, piece, uh, we are doing 15 pieces this year uh, from the black from the blue version, five pieces actually. Yeah. yeah do you do, the, do you offer these in in uh, like precious metal cases? Is this precious metal or this is steel? Case? Uh, no, this is also uh, steel. We uh, we would love to do. Um, we have offered uh, gold casing. Uh, yeah. But uh, it's uh, it's not. Uh, we have done a first series uh, yeah. of five pieces, uh, but it was really s uh, slow to to sell them. Uh, yeah. So uh, we again, you need like limited uh, orders, you know, of uh, basically 10, 10 cases, for example. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense uh, cost wise. But uh, yeah. we would like uh, we would like to do uh, more gold, um, and also with the. Uh, Belvedere, we might uh, do titanium one day, uh, like next year, uh, probably uh, titanium, uh, like a gray, grayish uh, uh, version of the Belvedere next year, perhaps. Oh, that, yeah, yeah, that's a that's a that's a good idea. Um, a lot of people do like the the gray uh, yeah. as well. I was just yeah. picturing that watch with the ro like a rose gold case with that blue skeletonized dial. Yeah, you know, you, but like you said, it's 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 yeah. got to be to a point where you have that that type of. Uh, ordering where you can get yeah you know. yeah yeah i was i you the same thing i was thinking i'm like that a rose gold you like know, with that blue that. that would yeah. just that would it's kill crazy, yeah if you if you get me uh five collectors we do it okay there you go we, <laughs> we got the, we got the watch hangout <laughs> exclusive uh, <laughs> yeah we, exactly we can do that yeah so i've been bouncing all over the place between because i had the press kit I don't know. Is there something in particular, Robert, you'd like me to try to pull up from everything? No, I think we have covered, uh, I think, many bases uh, here from the legacy, um, which for, 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 for us is really yeah, instrumental. Good. From some of the innovation uh, stuff, we talked uh, also about the exclusivity, uh, the, the pieces we are doing. The, of course, the, the, the handcrafting is super important, you know, with uh, the collaboration yeah. with Mark and also with uh, Therese, uh, with our uh, table clock. Um, I think, uh, and, of, and of course, uh, our Viennese background, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, that hopefully you all come and visit us here in our showroom for some nice uh, Viennese uh, wine. Vienna is uh, one of the cities that still has quite a substantial wine production uh, within the city, city limits. So... Uh, we have this famous horrigan. We could like uh, sing for our jubilee or uh, your friend that is uh, celebrating birthday today. <laughs> and of course, we always offer all our clients um, the, the famous Sacher cake uh, in the handover ceremony, the famous uh, chocolate cake uh, that, uh, is, uh, that, that was produced originally for our Kaiser Franz Joseph, our Emperor Franz Joseph. Yeah. I'm not sure you want people that are my size and JJ size showing mm -hmm. up to get cake. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually it's approaching an hour and it's almost 11 p.m for you i don't want to keep you too late um i did so but peruka swiss who's in the chat he's in geneva we uh higgins i didn't see him but he's in germany i think uh 
there is a distinct possibility you might meet some of our audience and i'm definitely i'm totally game to 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 come out there at one point when we, let's let's make the rows the, let's get five buyers for the, the, yeah, the rose i'm still games. thinking that the, the our, our own uh, special edition the uh, rose yeah. gold someone uh, mike was saying that you guys have a blue dial yellow gold i'm not sure which um which piece he's referring to um I'll pull it specifically up. but i'm sure that's a uh, quite interesting i'm i'm still stuck on the uh, table clocks as well yeah, oh, yeah. 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 yeah those table clocks are cool yeah there's actually some pictures of that solid brass um on their ig as well yeah. i mean i just i've been just flying through them I, I love the modern take on it because usually you see so many table clocks are either super futuristic where they're kind of like eh, too Maybe much yeah. There's, yeah. You, they don't have the taste and then you have super traditional which is exactly. kind of a little too old fashioned for me, but that one hits that sweet spot where it's like, oh, I would put that in my any, yeah. any room in my house, you know. No, and also we tried, you know, to make it carefree. You know, it has like an eight days uh, power reserve, so we basically the idea was to to enter your office, uh, you wind it, and then uh, for the rest of the week, uh, it's really a, a piesta. It's like an object, uh, an art object for for me. And also, uh, it's from both sides, it's attractive. So if you have it on your desk, for example, or wherever, uh, on the front, you have this beautiful skeletal movement uh, in the back also. The silver gong, which in that case is uh, already uh, gold-plated and uh, chimes once, uh, once an hour, but you can also uh, shut, shut it off uh, so it doesn't chime. So, and also, what if uh, the table clock is possible on the glass, uh, on the background, we can again, you know, uh, hand gravure uh, your name or uh, birthday or date or a, a special dedication. So, right. on the, on the case outside, you know, on the on the glass. So, yeah, cool. it is pretty. It is pretty. And we are proud because you know people in the industry all ah, do you already have an in-house movement? Uh, uh, it's like. This is an in-house movement, actually. And for this, by the way, it's not really necessary to do it, but uh, our watchmaster just uh, came last week and showed me uh, a Dubio version. Uh, we, we are doing No. It. Yeah. <laughs> it's not really necessary, but uh, it's just the beauty of doing it. Uh, and next week, with the design of the, of, of the table clock, uh, we're going to work it out how this kind of next edition will look like with a dubio yeah that's crazy a table clock with a turb <laughs> that's <laughs> nuts i love that i love that so audience you have like 30 seconds to send in any last minute questions um <laughs> robert like and and again not every second counts. Out there. Come on, give them one minute two minutes uh, yeah there we go time. not every second counts good call <laughs> the uh and hannah if you're out there or if you see this later really do appreciate your help as well um uh, it was a pleasure, really, uh, really nice. This was this 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 has been fantastic. Appreciate your time. Um, and talking about uh, retailers, please tell all your retailers. Uh, hey, do you have a Suki already uh, listed? <laughs> I I did my part there. I, I I nominated somebody that I think is is good there. So I yeah, hope, I hope uh, that works out. We have a chat next week, hopefully. Yeah, again. Oh, that's great! Great. Yeah. I know exactly who you're talking about too, and they're good. Yes. That, that, that they saw, be... uh, we saw them in uh, in Geneva. Four weeks ago very nice very nice people yeah wonderful well it was really a pleasure having you on robert i appreciate yeah. you taking time out of your night to uh explain all the intricacies of your brand and you know the whole journey that you went through is quite interesting i hope um, in the future people find this interview on the uh youtube okay. when they type in your brand name and they could get all their questions answered and if anybody wants to reach out um it's Carl Suki and so on. I'm going to say it right once, eventually, one day. I got to practice my, my uh, accent. You're doing it perfectly bit. already. Don't okay. worry. But check out their Instagram. You can message them there. Um, Ali, maybe you have another way to get in contact if they want, if people want to order. Or they, I mean, they, they have on their website, they have uh, order information. Um, it was, it's very smooth. And they have contact information for anything, anything custom on their website. So I, I suggest you go there. I'm going to, for the sake of, you know, the people who are in the chat i'm going to drop their ig and their website link just in the chat um, well, but it is that. in the description as well nice and i just want to pull up uh peruka's comment he's in switzerland he says i'll tell bukhara in geneva to partner up there you go <laughs> uh, thank you so much thank you so much 
All right. Well, thank you so much, really. It was a great pleasure and honor to talk to you. And thanks so much uh, for spreading the word uh, of the world of Suhi. And hope to see you soon uh, live uh, and in analog fashion, uh, in hopefully in the US, because I, I'd love to travel uh, to the US. Uh, any excuse you give me, I come. And uh, yeah, we'll be in touch. I, I like I like how he refers to humans as analog fashion, right? Because I'm still a very much pen and paper person. I've never actually like, oh, it's, you shake somebody's hand. This is analog introductions. Mm. I love it. Um, right. So the JJ, do you want to wrap or you want to stay on for a little while? Um, no, we can wrap, I guess, right? All right so we Robert, we're going to wrap, but you can actually stay on when it goes okay. off air just for a moment. Uh, everybody from people on JJ's Watch Hangout who support me and especially the fact that a lot of times you got to hear me list, uh, you got to hear me bitch about Rolex and, and, and Patek. <laughs> um, you guys tolerate my explorations. I hope you understand a little bit more why I have these explorations and why I go off the beaten path. Uh, people like Mr. Punkenhofer are exactly how I end up where I'm at with, you know, the, the collection proclivities I have. Um, really do appreciate everybody tuning in and uh, until next time, where your watches. There you go, folks. Don't forget to upvote if you enjoyed the content, and please leave a comment after the show. It does help us push us out to the algorithm. We will catch you uh, probably tomorrow night. If not, we'll catch you for Sunday Funday. Thanks for hanging with us, guys. Catch you in the next one. Yeah.